Hi, this is Cesar Dejaro, and this is my art critic video analysis. The first piece I'll be looking at and breaking down is Gustav Klimt's The Three Ages of Women. Uh, Gustav Klimt was an Austrian painter who was born on July 14, 1863, and specialized in the art style of symbolism. According to Klimt Gallery Org, some fun facts about Gustav were that he studied at the Vienna School of Arts and was a founding member of the Vienna Secession Movement. Also, his work focused mainly on the female body, eroticism, and the idea of femme fatale. Moreover, his style was a product of mixing Japanese, Egyptian, Byzantine, Minoan, Classical Greek, and Medieval European inspirations. In regards to Klim's work, Many of his paintings were enigmatic and eccentric, to say the least. His painting, The Three Ages of Women, is a great example of those unique qualities that he incorporates into all of his art. Gustav's use of contrasting colors in this piece adds an effect to the painting which makes it stand out more. The mixture of cool tones and warm tones around these three individuals, along with the neutral colors in the background, create a space of depth. It's almost as if the painting has three separate auras that combine together to give the painting a distinct sense of vividness. When looking at the young woman and the baby girl she is carrying in her arms, you notice that the color of their skin is vibrant compared to the elderly woman's skin, which is dull. The younger individuals have a serene vibe to them because of their pure white bodies, rosy cheeks, and lively hair color. The older individual, on the other hand, has a turbid-like quality as the essence of her body is grayed and hazy. Nonetheless, the colors used by Klimt are used to display the difference of age between these three females and the qualities they possess according to their age group. Besides color, the painting's line work and usage of shape further accentuates the abstract presence it possesses. The outline of these women's bodies that are drawn out are definite. However, the baby and the young woman have more of a dreamlike quality to them, which makes them appear faint. Their expressions also add to their serene and dreamlike qualities as they're both drawn with their eyes closed and resting in a calm demeanor. The elderly woman's outline is much more distinct and real. For example, the veins on her feet and hands, her hagging skin, her plump stomach, and her frail, skeleton-like figure all signify that she has aged. She also has her hands to her face as if she's drained or tired. It's a real-life representation of how people's bodies change as they get older. These three individuals are also engulfed in two separate atmospheres filled by distinct patterns. The youthful individuals are surrounded by concentric circles, dots, flowers, triangles, leaves, swirls, and a translucent robe-like pattern. The eldest individual is surrounded by smaller circles, dots, and patches. As you can see, the title of Klimt's painting does it justice. These three naked female entities represent the cycle of life and the stages that women and human beings in general go through. The infant girl and the young woman share an aura of youth from the various shapes to the subtle lines of their body and the cool colors that fill their space are all representations of, of the vitality, beauty, warmth, radiance, and the, viv the, viv the vivaciousness the youth possesses. Furthermore, the way the young woman holds the baby in such a nurturing manner represents motherhood. The motherly figure has flowers on her head which symbolizes purity, new life, and fertility, which are all associated with youth. It's also apparent that this mother and childlike rip relationship symbolizes love and unity. The older woman's aura is filled with warm colors and less shapes, but the outline of her body is sharper in comparison. These details symbolize wisdom, truth, authority, loneliness, patience, and fairness.
which characterize the elderly. The older woman covers her face down into her hands, which implies that she's powerless and no longer has the energy to live. It appears as if she's defeated and time has took a toll on her. More importantly, the meaning behind this painting is that these three stages of life, infancy, adulthood, and seniority, represent the infinite cycle of life. The eldest woman has lived her life and is getting closer to the end of it, but we, was, we must remember that she was once an infant and a young adult. The young woman is in her prime as she holds a young child in her arms. She too was held that way as a baby, but youth doesn't last forever and she'll eventually grow old. The infant girl sleeping on the woman's chest is barely starting out her life, but she will experience the world, grow into a beautiful young woman, become a parent, and reach seniority. This cycle links these three individuals together. There is no escaping it. We are born into this world, we live, we grow, we conceive life, we get older, and inevitably die. Despite Klimp pa painting these women naked, it wasn't for the intention of eroticizing them, but for him to display the purest form of women as human beings. Another reason could be that he wanted to represent the true essence of human nature and life. Being that they are women, they are the givers of life. Thus, the cycle of life wouldn't exist without them because they are the bridge between creation and birth. The next art piece I'll be analyzing is one of Pedro Friedberg's untitled paintings. Though this piece doesn't have an official name, it has been given an official title, which is Obeliskoid Monkey Business. Pedro Friedberg is a Mexican artist who was born on January 11th, 1936. He was originally born in Florence, Italy, but his family moved to Mexico when he was only three years old in order to escape the dangers of World War II and the Holocaust. Pedro attended the Universidad Iberoamericana in Mexico City and studied architecture. It wasn't until 1960 that he dropped out of school to become an artist and designer. After leaving university, Pedro would gravitate towards this, the art style of surrealism and would eventually become an artist who specialized in surrealist and contemporary art. According to Artnet.com, his eclectic body of work bridges architectural imagery and psychedelic patterns with occult iconography. Through mixing his architectural and artistic backgrounds with religious symbols, it would allow him to create unique and erotic pieces. For that reason, Todd um, MerrillStudio.com points out that Pedro Friedberg is one of Mexico's most recognized artists and happens to be the last surviving member of the Mexican sur Surrealists. At first glance, this piece has a lot going on. There are various shapes, symbols, objects, and animals that interact with each other. It almost represents a town square where there is a abundance of activity and people going about their day. In regards to color, Friedberg uses a limited variety of cool, warm, and neutral colors. On the upper border of the painting, there is an archetype pattern that runs from the left to right which outlines the deep blue sky beneath it. The cloud-like shapes are colored by baby blue, uh, the pointed pillars on the left are painted orange and red, and the rooftops of the left have yellow outlines. There are different shades of red too, from the flags up top to the four circular symbols in the center and the diamond-like shapes beneath the flags. There are some hints of purple on the lower hand side and the rest is comprised of white and black. Even though there isn't much color being used, it makes the painting more straightforward and appealing. There are at least two vanishing points in this piece. The first one runs from the top left corner to the upper part of the building above the first white pillar. The second one runs from the bottom left corner to the horizon behind the first white pillar. As far as shapes and symbols are concerned, there are a multitude of religious references going on here. For example, 
The orange pillars on the left are obelisks, which are commonly found in front of Egyptian temples. These obelisks are said to have been built to honor Egyptian gods and rulers. There is also a temple-like structure in front of the first obelisk, which contains five, five outlines of the Star of David, which may represent a Jewish temple or synagogue. On the right, there are structures outlined in yellow, which are rooftops of padogas. These padogas serve as temples for those who practice the Taoist and Buddhist religions and are found all across Asia. Below them are these square-like structures which contain ancient quincux patterns, which are geometric figures that have five points, squares, or rectangles that are arranged into a cross. These symbols are common in alchemy, astrology, and are sometimes found on top of churches. According to ancientsymbols.com, it is a symbol of a sanctified universe and an ordered world. Right in the center, there are five pillars that structure four entrances, which are commonly found in Islamic mosques. There are also sh other shapes, which are circles filled with unknown and random patterns. There are also monkeys when the, within the painting that are either sitting, climbing ladders or structures, hanging off buildings, and standing on top of a pillar holding a red flag. There are also five fishes of different sizes hovering above the air and put in order from big to small. It is said that monkeys symbolize deep knowledge and intelligence, while fish symbolize the higher self and the deeper awareness of the unconsciousness. Having said that, I feel that the meaning behind this particular painting is about we, how we as society live life and how we often do it without thinking critically about what goes on in the world. As mentioned before, this painting has a lot of religious symbolism to it. Religion is a tool that we use to practice our beliefs and spirituality depending on our culture. It is also a moral compass for us to learn about what is considered right and wrong, as well as faith, hope, and destiny. However, Religion is one of society's most powerful institutions and social constructs. From the day we are born, we are taught what to believe, how to act, how to feel, and how to live our lives accordingly. I believe he was trying to explain that no matter where you're from, what your culture is, and what you believe in doesn't make a difference because we all conform to the standards of society without asking ourselves why. Pedro uses monkeys in this painting to represent how we, as human beings, blindly follow orders and mimic others to hold ourselves to societal standards and maintain the status quo. There are some ladders where monkeys are seen visibly climbing. This is a reference to a social experiment done by scientists where they place five monkeys in one room and a ladder with bananas on top of it. They wanted to see if a learned behavior from one monkey influences the behavior of the others. Each time one of them climbed up the ladder, the rest of the monkeys were sprayed with cold water, causing them to attack whoever climbed it. They ended up substituting each monkey one by one, and those who were unaware of the consequences would get beat up. Inevitably, all these monkeys would learn this behavior and conform to it without thinking much about it. The term monkey see, monkey do is a good analogy to use when talking about conformity. Nonetheless, humans are no different and we're similar to primates in a sense. The fishes represent the enlightening way of thinking that society lacks and since they're floating in the sky, it means that acquiring deep awareness isn't an easy task. You have to work from the bottom up to gain a higher sense of self. Therefore, this painting's message is don't be a follower, think for yourself, and stay true to who you are. That was my art analysis. Thank you.